Hello, everybody. Welcome to this video series on the Cambridge Capital Controversy for Modern Economists. In this video, we are going to provide an overview of what the Cambridge Capital Controversy was and talk about some of the criticisms that were generated from it towards modern economic theory. So without further delay, let's go and get started. So this is going to be a video series which seeks to provide an overview of the Cambridge Capital Controversy over the course of four short videos. We will discuss core issues regarding the measurement of capital and the non-monotone relationship between interest rate or rate of profit and the demand curve for capital. Now, a great deal of historical details will be ignored for the sake of showing the key theoretical arguments of this debate. So by the end of this video series, you should be able to define the criticisms of the Cambridge capital controversy, understand why its criticism had little influence on the work of modern economics, and understand why switching and re-switching matter to policymakers conducting cost-benefit analysis. And again, this is some of my own personal interest uh, with regards to this material. So this last point is optional for all. Now it's important to note that I am not a heterodox uh, economist. That means that some of the material that will be expressed here won't be done with as much accuracy or as much enthusiasm as someone who is of such a persuasion. Now, what was the Cambridge Capital Controversy? The Cambridge Capital Controversy was a theoretical disagreement between Cambridge UK and Cambridge US, which was at MIT, about the measurement of capital as a homogeneous factor of production and issues with defining the relationship between the demand for capital and interest rate. It occurred from the mid 1950s until the end of the 1970s. And the main actors in this debate were Paul Samuelson and Robert Solo on the Cambridge US side coming from MIT and Joan Robinson and Piero Serafa coming from Cambridge UK, which was at the University of Cambridge. Now it's important to note, the central topic of this debate was, does the law of demand hold for capital? Really, is it always true that there is an inverse relationship between our interest rate and capital? Now, two of the main criticisms coming from the Cambridge capital controversy were as follows. First is that there's no monotone relationship between the utilization of capital and the interest rate in a production process due to the possibility of re-switching, which is gonna occur when our producer has several methods of production. Now, an implication of reswitching is this idea of reverse capital deepening, also just called capital reversal, where the law of demand does not hold for capital, which means that we may observe more capital intensive methods be preferred at a higher interest rate, which again, is not so uh, intuitive there. Now, it's important to note that the Cambridge capital controversy was first and foremost a debate about the relationship between capital and interest rate and criticisms about aggregate production functions followed, but discussions about production functions, though appearing very central uh, to this debate, are very much adjacent to this core issue of re-switching and reverse capital deepening. Now, these seem like really uh, conceptual issues, and you might think to yourself, well, why is it such a big deal that there is re-switching um, in a production process? It doesn't sound so crazy. So I drew a little bit of a uh, map here, which goes and starts us out from understanding first, if reswitching goes and exists, then there's no relationship between capital utilization and interest rate, no downward sloping relationship between these two. That means the law of demand does not apply to capital. And the allocation of capital by our factor market is not determined by supply and demand. Further, if we know that the allocation of capital in our factor market is not determined by supply and demand, we can't say how other market allocations are going to be determined. There. We can't say that they're going to be determined by supply and demand there. And if that's the case, then modern economic models based on general equilibrium are wrong. Now, there's a couple of holes uh, in this logic if you look closely enough, but roughly speaking, um, this is the main flow of thought with regards to reswitching, going out to modern economic theory being wrong. So, this is all uh, for right now. In the next video, we're going to go more in depth on reswitching and reverse capital deepening. I'll see you guys in that video. Take care.